Welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast, where your source for personal, professional, and organizational growth and development, where we share original research, explore industry trends, and interview executives and thought leaders from across the globe. We hope you join us often for practitioner-oriented content around all things related to leadership, HR, talent management, organizational development, and change management. Maximize your personal and organizational potential with Human Capital Innovations Podcast. Do you enjoy the Human Capital Innovations Podcast? Please subscribe, leave a review, comment, share, and consider supporting the podcast on Patreon, even at the producer and sponsorship levels. Welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. In this HCI podcast episode, I talk with Alina Sviterskaya about leveraging a strength-based approach to leadership. Alina Sviterskaya, welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. (laughs) Oh, it's so nice to be here. <laughs> it is a pleasure to be with you, and I appreciate the thumbs up as I'm trying to get your name pronunciation correct, and, and I appreciate your patience with me on that one. Um, but it's a pleasure to be with you, and, and today we're going to be talking about leveraging a strength-based approach to our leadership. And of course, there's a lot of materials out there. I'm sure people have heard of Strengths Finder, um, and, and there's a lot of different approaches to how we can develop ourselves. I personally really like the strength-based approach uh, primarily. I I like kind of an asset-based approach, building upon what you have as opposed to a deficit kind of conception or mentality, uh, because I think that's just starting from a place of defeat, really. And and it's it's not leaning into a growth mindset. So I think uh, this is going to be a really fun conversation. You're joining us from Toronto. I'm south of Salt Lake City in Utah. uh, And Before we get started, I just wanted to share Alina's bio with everybody. Alina Sviterskaya is a passionate leadership coach, speaker, and facilitator located in Toronto. Her work is focused on helping organizations become positive and innovative places to work by turning managers into high-performing leaders and strategically tapping into innate employee strengths to create a culture of passion and full engagement. Her biggest passion is showing people a glimpse of their potential help them break down the mental barriers, and most importantly, inspiring them to take action. Alina holds a degree in psychology from McGill University and is a graduate of Coach U Coaching Program, a creator of Empowered to Lead Program, and a co-creator of the Work and Wellness Amplified Program. She uses her extensive and diverse corporate experience and a relentless drive to succeed to deliver results for her clients while supporting them through the process. What a tremendous background. It's, again, a pleasure to be with you. And anything else you would like to share with listeners by way of your background and personal context before we dive on in further? Yeah, I I think, you know, uh, this this topic, I'm I'm passionate about leadership, of course, but this topic in particular is really dear to my heart because for many, many years, I actually approached my development from the weakness base and kind of trying to trying to get to the average level really being fully fully aware of my weaknesses right and then what I realized is the, that the corporate world everything around me was also focusing on weaknesses right and and when we had great performance it's yes it's it's great but then there's that constructive feedback of saying well you didn't really do well here and so that just stood out so much and it's I think just natural tendency of our brain to focus on the negative and to create that shift into, okay, all, yes, we can have five things that that we did great, but then there's one thing that we didn't. And all of a sudden our mind goes straight there. And we're always thinking, well, I'm not good at this. I'm not good at this. I'm not good at this. And that approach, actually, what I realized made me give, give up on so many different things because I was trying to focus on improving my weaknesses and using it more. And like you said, earlier it's not a really great place to be so the moment I personally switched to strength-based approach to life in general 
it became a game changer in my business, in my, in my corporate world, with my clients. And I see it with my clients all the time. So it's, it's a very dear topic to me. I'm really looking forward to it. <laughs> yeah. Well, in the way you said it was a game changer, I, I can remember, uh, it wasn't a moment, but over a, a period of time, I can specifically remember in my late teenage years, as I started to shift that mindset, I was, I was doing mission service for my church in South Korea, um, learning the Korean language, immersed in the Korean culture, uh, away from family and friends. Um, and it's just a very, very difficult kind of a situation, uh, mm -hmm. very taxing. I think out of, out of a effort to just survive, it was, it was really in survival mode, I started to recognize I need to shift my paradigm. And up to that point, I'd always been kind of a turn your weaknesses into strengths kind of a person. Uh, and that was always my focus. And I, and I still think there's some value to that. Um, but because I was so, I was drowning in all my weakness <laughs> in this context that I, I had to, to find a way to focus on those things that I was good at and build upon those. And then over time, you know, my weaker areas, I started to level up and, and started to, uh, to become more competent in those areas as well. But really by leveraging my strengths, I was able to have success far earlier than I would have been able to had I, I kind of waited around for all of these really weak areas to, to become strengths. Because the reality is many of those areas are never, they were never going to become strengths. They're never going to become strengths. Uh, it's, it's just not my, my, my talent, right? And so you recognize your talents, you recognize your strengths, you lean into those uh, and it is rather freeing when you can let go of that burden, let go of potentially shame, embarrassment, potentially, you know, what the imposter syndrome, whatever you can let go of that and just recognize, you know, I'm not good at everything and that's okay. That's why we have teams of people around us. That's why we have others who complement our skill set, so that together collectively we can have the strengths needed to be successful, but I don't have to be all things to all people all the time. And once I was able to mentally let go of that expectation on myself or perhaps what other people were putting on me, uh, it, it just changed my outlook on everything. It changed my outlook on the world. It changed my outlook on learning and growth. It changed uh, how, I, how I thought about myself, how I interacted with others. And, you know, I can, I can just remember that transformation as it was happening in those years. Uh, and that, that put me on a completely different path than I would have been on had I kind of stuck in this, the, the, the old mindset that I had always operated on. Oh, you, there's so many things that you have said there that I just, first of all, I can definitely relate to that. But it's also, I think, leveraging strength, and you mentioned the, the word leverage, and I love it because it's really strength is like a lever, you know, it allows you to do things easier, faster, and, and just with, it's just to a bigger extent, right? And, and another thing that you mentioned that's really, really stood out for me is that saying, you know, like accepting you are who you are, and letting go of that shame and embarrassment and really focusing on all the things that you're not versus really celebrating all the things that you are. And the way I, I see strength is, is there on the spectrum. So every strength you have, there is a corresponding weakness to that. So all our weaknesses is really is the opposite side of our strength, if you think about it, right? So when we focus on that, we're ignoring the other side of the coin. For example, if we're really inspirational and we can create the speeches and influence people with our our thoughts and, and really energize uh, big, large, uh, large groups of people, well, then probably we may not be really that great at details and finishing things up, right? But we're focusing on that versus, hey, I can influence, I can energize groups of people. So it's, and, and when it comes to leadership, I think there's also that responsibility of when you don't accept yourself and you don't really recognize your strength and you focus on your weaknesses, you're sending a very powerful message to your team. When you're, you're kind of um, experiencing the shame and, and, and focusing on not accepting yourself and trying to always change who you are, you, you kind of intuitively and, and subconsciously also transferring that to your team. You're sending them the message just by virtue of what you say and how you behave. It's not okay to accept who you are. You always need to kind of focus and fix yourself. It's that, it's that um, place of fixing, fixing yourself because you're not good enough versus 
thriving and leveraging and celebrating. So I think just there's so many things that you said there. <laughs> thank you for sharing. Well, and thank you. Uh, you. You say it so well also. And your example is is just a, an example of one of those that is not my strength. So I, I learned early on, I'm not a charismatic type of person. And, you know, I'm introverted. I'm, I'm kind of a, a thoughtful person. I sit back, I listen. Um, I'm, I'm good. I, I'm an effective communicator, um, but I'm, I'm particularly uh, a strong writer. And, and I'm not always great in the moment if, if I'm in front of a large group of people. And so that charismatic leadership, that's not my strength. Um, and for a long time, I thought, well, I'm never going to succeed uh, in my career because I'm, I don't have that kind of extroverted, charismatic kind of an approach. Uh, for a while, I tried, and it's just it wasn't authentic, and people can tell. Like it's it's just mm-hmm. it's just fake, and it comes off. It Absolutely. doesn't land with people. And so once I was able to let go of that and just be who I was, and leverage, you know, the kind of the quiet calm that I tend to exude when I'm around people, um, and just the consistency. Uh, you know, I, I'm really good at things like consistency and just hard work and, and focusing on the needs of people and, and being supportive. Like these are things that, you know, I, I really, I believe I truly have strengths in, and you know what, those are important in leadership too. And so Mm -hmm. I'm just going to focus on those, uh, when, when the time comes that I need that kind of get everyone riled up, kind of charismatic, kind of an approach, maybe there's someone else on my team that I can have do that, um, Mm -hmm. And that's fine. And I don't, again, I don't have to be all things to all people. So once I recognize that specific area of myself, uh, it, it really allowed me to unlock my energy towards what was going to be most productive. Um, and, and the opposite would be true too. Like you said, if someone, not that it's mutually exclusive, you can be charismatic and detail oriented, mm-hmm. but, yeah. but you're right. You know, sometimes people who are, are more uh, extroverted and, and charismatic, sometimes they're not always as focused on, on the details. And if that's the case, that's okay. Like have other people on your team that can, that can chime in and tell you what needs to happen and, and follow up and, and focus on the details or, or, or those other areas that maybe you're less inclined to pay attention to. And that's, that's totally fine. Um, so again, getting, getting rid of that, that burden of just expecting ourselves to be good at everything, um, or, or even, you know, I would say kind of the cultural expectation that through enough grit, we can make every single weakness we have into a strength. While I love the general idea behind that, it's, it's not realistic and it's not productive for most people. Mm-hmm. And most people will end up churning and churning and churning and just burn themselves out, get discouraged and ultimately give up uh, on when really, if they, if they would just get up to speed, like if you have an air, a weakness area, like strengths finders always talks about derailers. So if you have a derailer, something that's really going to stop you from progression do you need to work on it? Yes. Do you need to make sure that you can develop enough so it's no longer a derailer and you're you're marginally competent? Yes. But is that ever going to become your area of strength? Most likely not. And and putting all of your your energy into that is going to be a waste of time and energy when you could be focusing on things that are going to be much more beneficial. Check out my new book, The Future Leader, Creating and Transforming Next-Gen Organizations. Stemming from two decades of professional experience and over 600 in-depth interviews with executives, thought leaders, and scholars from across the globe, The Future Leader will help you explore the ordinary, everyday actions that will help you to prepare to lead in the future of work, to respond to an uncertain future, and to produce extraordinary results for individuals, teams, and organizations. Welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Academy, courses, micro-credentials, and certificates to upskill and reskill for the future of work. 
All HCI Academy courses, micro-credentials, and certificates are designed, developed, and delivered by award-winning and internationally renowned scholars, educators, thought leaders, executives, and practitioners. Our courses, micro-credentials, and certificates will help you make your mark on the future of work and make an immediate impact in your organizations. Check out the HCI Academy and our many course offerings and certificates to upskill and reskill for the future of work. Check out our new weekly LinkedIn newsletter, Alchemizing Human Capital, exploring industry trends via original research and interviews with executives and thought leaders from across the globe. We look forward to having you join us. Absolutely. And, and you know, something that you mentioned earlier is that the how, right, the how of, of getting to the result you want can be so different. So like you said, you know, your your style of leadership and your strength are very different from other people. And, and there was this uh, survey done of 20,000 leaders that are really effective. And what, what researchers realize is that they don't share the same qualities. You can be equally effective and not get there uh, in the same way. So it's, to me, I kind of the, the analogy of the GPS and the taking, you know, a drive somewhere um, comes to mind. So for example, when you know where you need to get, so the, those are the results, of, those are the goals that you have, but you can take so many different routes there. You can do a senior crowd if that's what you want, and you can take a highway, you can take, a, you know, streets, a busy streets, whatever you want. You can, there are many different ways to get there, but you are going to get there. And the more you realize what those strengths are and, and you make it, your intentional strategy to use that and leverage that, the more enjoyable this path would be for you. And, and it's those day-to-day activities is, is that's what really creates your energy because the time, there's a lot of conversations about time management and time management, yes, there's a lot of things there, but it's the energy that is it's, it's expandable. We don't, we can't change the number of hours in a day, but when we show up and we're energized and we're motivated, we just do things differently. We just do it and it, the energy just multiplies. And that's what happens when you use your strength. You just show up differently. You think differently. You're more creative because you enjoy it. So when you enjoy doing something, you're going to do it and you're going to invest more time in it. You're going to invest more of yourself into that. Whereas when you start with this kind of a negative balance and you need to bring it to zero that's what weakness kind of is right so we kind of want to get it to the acceptable level where it's not because it doesn't become a risk anymore but that ah it's like that debt that you need to repay the motivation towards that is much lower you're going to procrastinate you're going to find excuses of so why not to do it you're just going to dread it it's 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 going to create a very different experience for ourselves and and i just recently read about the the survey that Gallup did and it showed that only one percent of people get discouraged when their managers actively leverage their strength versus 40 percent of people that get discouraged when managers ignore their strength that's a big difference that's a big gap so that leveraging our strength can be a such a such a um, competitive advantage for leader for leaders who are yeah. able to know their strength know the strengths of their team and leverage. And like you said, it's about then partnering up with other people. And I think being well-rounded is really overvalued. It's an, like, like you said, it's nice theory. It's nice in theory, but in reality, being well-rounded, mm, but becoming, having a well-rounded team is a much better concept than being a well-rounded individual. Yeah, yeah, absolutely agree. Uh, and so. Again, as we're as we're talking through this, I, you know, I think everyone listening is probably, you know, thinking of of similar kind of experiences and examples in your own personal life. I think that's that's super helpful. Um, and so, th- think about how all these these topics, all these all these principles, are applying directly to you. Uh, that kind of self reflection is ultimately going to put you in a place where you have the the best potential to you know make a plan uh, mm-hmm. and, and and perhaps in in some cases shift your strategy as you work to develop yourself. Um, one thing that you've kind of mentioned a few times, Alina, as we've gone through this conversation to this point uh, is, is about some of the different types of behaviors that we might go through as we're trying to develop uh, a strengths-based approach. 
Um, so what, what do you, would you see as some of those key leadership habits or behaviors that we have to really become more comfortable with if we're going to leverage not only our, our own strengths as a leader, but also help our team to do the same, to recognize their strengths and to leverage them? Mm. So I think there's actually quite a few different ones. I think one, the first one is really um, this habit of being okay with asking for help. Right. So it's when we said when we're not strong at something, then we need to do something about it. We can just if this is something that doesn't really matter, if it's a weakness that if we don't use it, we don't use it and everything is OK, fine. Yeah, drop it by all means. Go ahead and drop it. And if nobody no, really notices that. But if it's something that's really required for performance of the team or, get, you know, getting results then you need some strategies. And one of them is recognizing when you are not strong at this and asking for help. And it's it's a, it's a win win, really, because not only you're going to get results that are much higher than if you try to really work on this and, and go against who you are and try to, 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 to improve that weakness. But it also shows your team that it's okay to ask for help. So that's kind of, again, modeling your behavior and saying it's okay not to be good at everything. And it's okay to ask for help or ask for other people's, uh, people's feedback and kind of brainstorming what can we do about it. I think it's also a habit of curiosity because recognizing your strength takes time. It takes space because oftentimes we think we're self-aware. We're really not. <laughs> and when we are strong at something, oftentimes we assume that if we like doing it and if we're good at this, when everyone is good at this, well, what do you mean you don't want to talk in front of, uh, you know, a lot of people? Or what do you mean, uh, you know, you don't, you don't like to learn? Like, I think it's, it's common, but just because we're good at that, it doesn't mean that everyone is good at that. So that's where we need to have a very, again, intentional approach to recognizing your strength, getting that feedback from other people. Maybe it's just doing the strength finder and getting that input from others. And also then being curious about what your team's strengths are. And that requires intentional focus is, is maybe looking at their performance. Where do they excel? What are they really proud about? What are they excited to do? What is in their development plan that they kind of put forward and said, I want to develop this? And even asking them, what do you think your strengths are, right? So it's understanding what the strengths are and then, then you can strategically leverage them. But it's also around then having a strategic approach to building your team, right? We talked about how it's better to have a well-rounded team. Well, that it takes effort is recognizing the strength and then realizing, oh, I'm really good at, let's say execution, but I need somebody who's really good at relationship building. So then when you build your team is how do we focus on having that well-rounded team and, and, and then using their strengths to the best, you know, to, to up-level the results of the whole team. Yeah. And, and I, I don't think we can emphasize that last point enough because I think it's human nature to that we tend to surround ourselves with other people that are like us. And so when, when we talk, you know, in theory, talking about creating a well-rounded team and a diverse team, not just racial, ethnic, gender, sexual orientation, Mm -hmm. diversity, and such, but cognitive diversity, people with different approaches and styles and worldview, right? As we talk about that, I think everyone recognizes, yeah, that's important. We need to do that. But human nature pushes us towards surrounding ourselves with people who are like us, right? Mm -hmm. And, and overvaluing similarity and undervaluing difference. Uh, And so someone may have a strength that's different than mine. And I might even recognize that the question is, am I secure enough in myself? And is my ego in check enough to recognize that a strength is a strength that can be leveraged? And I don't, I don't even need to play that game. I don't need to play the game of saying my strength is better than your strength. It's, it's all about complementary strengths, right? Creating that well-rounded team. Uh, mm-hmm. And just, just because someone focuses in a different area than I do on their own development doesn't mean it's wrong or it's bad. Uh, and just because someone focuses the same way I do or, or their strengths are similar to mine doesn't mean they're better or doesn't mean they're, you know, they're going to be more successful. Uh, so we, we really need to be cautious about creating teams uh, and, and th- falling into the trap of, of, of just surrounding ourselves with people who are like us or people who, who will say yes to everything or, mm-hmm. or all those types of things. Because that, that short circuits any of this kind of strengths-based approach that we've been discussing. 
Yeah, I, I love that you mentioned that that bias that we have, right? And it's again the same way our brain is biased to see more, you know, look for more negative things and focus on them because it's it's meant to protect us. It wants to it wants to recognize all the dangers. That's why we're really focusing on all the negative and, and the weaknesses. Um, but it requires to get off the autopilot, right? Because if we just continue with the flow, our our brain is not going to take us to the right direction. And I also enjoy the fact that you said, you know, it's, it's complementary strength. And, and the, the side bonus of that is that when we have complementary strength in a team, we are not competing as much, right? So because we all have our roles to play, we feel valued and we can work on our almost an expert status, right? Because we're, we feel valued because we know what we bring to the team very clearly. We don't have to compete with other people. And I think this is also very important to have a productively diverse team. So cognitive diversity, I love that you mentioned that it's not just some external external um, elements that you know we need to be diverse in, but it's also points of view, the way we process information, um, all of those things, the strength and, and, and characteristics and skills, if we can leverage that, then that just, it becomes one plus one equals not two, but three and four and five. And the, the solutions that we can come up with just it's, it expands the options, it expands the views of, of the situation, and we can just make better decisions. Yeah, well said, Alina. Uh, this has just been a pleasure. We've only scratched the surface, but I note the time and I'm going to have to let you go here in a few minutes. Before we go, though, I wanted to give you a chance to share with listeners how they can connect with you, find out more about your work, uh, and then give us the final word on the topic for today. Uh, yes, in terms of where to find me, LinkedIn is probably the, my, my virtual digital home. That's where I spend most of my time. That's where I post my content and trying to really help uh, managers become leaders and, and elevate their skills. There's all, I also have a website, uh, inesiruskaya.com. And in terms of the strength leadership, which is the topic, I, I thank you so much for having this fantastic conversation. It was just such a pleasure to talk about this. I'm really passionate about it. So I can see that you are as well. And it's just start somewhere. You know, if you don't know your strength, it's okay. There's so many different assessments. There's so many different uh, exercises that you can do. Ask people around you. And trust me that just understanding your strength will just elevate your experience at work to a different level. Because we all, we spend so much time at work and it's definitely worthwhile to invest your time and making this time more enjoyable more flow, more ease for you. And uh, it affects the rest of your life. Anything you do, it just expands. So I really, I really hope that people will invest in that. <laughs> yes. Wonderful. Thank you, Alina. It has been a pleasure. I encourage mm -hmm. listeners to reach out, get connected, find out more about what Alina can do for you. And let's build on our strengths. Let's leverage our strengths and the strengths of our team and just make the workplace a much better, more productive, uh, more innovative place. And as always, I hope everyone can stay healthy and safe, that you can find meaning and purpose at work each and every day. And I hope you all have a great week. Bluer Than Indigo Leadership, the journey of becoming a truly remarkable leader. Early in my adult life, I learned about an Asian proverb that translates as bluer than indigo. If you think about the color indigo, it is a brilliant, deep, and vibrant blue, what some would call the bluest of blues. To have something that is bluer than indigo is rare and truly remarkable. Contrary to popular myth, there is no one-size-fits-all or cookie-cutter approach to effective leadership. There is no silver bullet, no secret sauce, no go-to model that will solve all of your problems. The truth is, great leaders have all had their unique strengths and flaws, and have all had to discover and then pave their own distinctive path in their life's journey to fulfill their leadership potential. Bluer Than Indigo Leadership will help you discover your own path and explore those ordinary, everyday actions that will help you respond to an uncertain future and produce extraordinary results for your individuals, teams, and organizations. Check out Human Capital Innovations magazine, Human Capital Leadership. Human Capital Leadership is a free, interactive e-magazine with the mission to help individuals, leaders, and organizations find innovative approaches to maximize their human capital potential. We publish issues quarterly in August, November, February, and May. 
Take a look at the latest issue and let us know what you think. The Alchemy of Truly Remarkable Leadership. Ordinary, everyday actions that produce extraordinary results. Consider how the nature of work has shifted over the past 50 years. With increased globalization, rapid technological advancement, and the shift in economic composition, the average job of today looks very different than the average job of 50 years ago. What will the jobs and organizations of tomorrow look like? Moreover, what does this all mean for organizational leaders? What are the core competencies and capabilities of organizations and their leadership that are prepared for continued disruption and geopolitical and socioeconomic shifts? Regardless of what the future holds, increasingly, leaders need to be socially minded, data driven, decisive, champions of talent, and disruptors of the traditional notions of leadership, teams, organizations, and work. The alchemy of truly remarkable leadership will help you to explore your own leadership competencies and capabilities and consider ways to apply and implement them into your workplace and personal life. Do you enjoy the Human Capital Innovations Podcast? Please subscribe, leave a review, comment, share, and consider supporting the podcast on Patreon even at the producer and sponsorship levels. Thanks again for joining us for this episode of the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. I hope you stay healthy and safe and that you have a great week.